Hello everybody, my name is Stephen Avedia, I'm from the library, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to evaluate information. And to do that, we're going to use something called the craft test. There are lots of these um, lists available that help you to evaluate information by giving you a list of things to help you make decisions. But the craft test kind of has a memorable name. Um, it's also an acronym, so the C stands for currency, the R for relevance, the first A is authority, the second A is accuracy, and the P is purpose. Um, if I were to put these in order of importance, I would start with relevance, because I think everything flows out of if the article is relevant to your article. Um, but for the purposes of today, we're just going to stick to the, the craft order. So I'm imagining we're doing research around the idea of like what's the role of humanities in higher education. And this is the type of article that you might find that addresses that question. So this is the article from the database page, and you can see the author, the source, the date, all of that information, an abstract, which is a short description of the article. And then if you click the PDF full text link, it would take you to the actual article that you would read and use to help you make your decisions. <clears throat> so let's apply the crap test to this humanities out of joint article. So currency. Currency is the most straightforward because it just has to deal with the idea of when an article was published and if that if that's too old for the type of research that you're doing so if you're doing research around current events you obviously want very recent articles if you're doing research around technology or health issues you probably most want the most recent article you can find but if you're doing historical research the date is less important you know articles on world war ii written in 1980 aren't too old but articles about politics might be from 1980 might be too old so it really depends on your research so think about the type of research that you're doing and what would make information too out of date so in our case um, here's the database page again and here's the date october 2015. so in our case something from 2015 that's talking about the role of humanities in higher education probably isn't too old because a lot not, not much has changed you know you're just looking at the ideas and the importance of humanities, um, but you're not necessarily interested in like the most cutting edge take on this. You know, you can look at something that somebody said a few years ago and it's still going to be valid. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, this this passes the currency test. Relevant, which I talked about at the beginning as the most important variable, that's how how the article you found answers your research question. So I think the big question around relevance is how you can tell if an article is relevant. And the easiest way really is just to read the article. So something I like to do is to put a timer on my phone for five or 10 minutes, something like that, and just to, to let myself read the article until the alarm goes off. And usually in five or 10 minutes, you can tell if an article answers your research question. You can tell even sooner probably if it's making you think about your research, if it's making you think about what you're writing, if it's giving you ideas, it's probably relevant to your research. If, if you don't really feel connected to the article, if you don't understand what the author is trying to say, that's usually an indication that the article isn't relevant. But the nice thing about relevance, and especially starting with it, is that if an article isn't connected to your research, if it's not relevant, you can just throw it on the pile and you don't have to worry about the other variables. And that's why I think it's the most important. Authority. Authority is just why you trust the person or people who have written the article. And that can be a little bit hard to suss out. Um, going back to the article that we're looking at, at the end of it, there's a little biography of the author. So here's Michael Morans, and we learn he's a professor of history at UCLA. We see books that he's written. So many academic articles have this type of information, sometimes at the beginning, sometimes at the end. If you wanted to go a little further, you could Google the person. So here's a Google search. Um, and you see we have a, a page from his UCLA faculty page. Um, we have Google gives us a little breakout. We have something from the Canary Mission. And just a few minutes of research too can sort of just help you figure out like if a person is qualified to talk about whatever it is or to write about whatever it is they're writing about. So here's Michael Moranz's faculty page from UCLA. So when he joined the department where he got his degree from, this is all helpful. And here's that Canary Mission page that we saw. And here you see it's talking about his views on Zionism, um, or it's identifying him as an anti-Zionist. 
And something like this can be a little hard to navigate. So we know the page is coming from Canary Mission. So in this instance, I might look and just see what Canary Mission is. And we learn from the Wikipedia page that it's just a website that compiles dossiers on activist professors and organiza organizations that have been identified as anti-Israel or anti-Semitic. Um, so this is all very complex to deal with, but if we bring it back to the, to the relevance um, variable, then we can just sort of think, okay, well, is this article dealing with Israel? Is it dealing with Zionism? Or is this an article about uh, humanities and the role of humanities in higher education? So I would be inclined to just say, you know, his views, I wouldn't even get involved in, in figuring out what his views are and if they're justified. I would just sort of say his views on this one issue are not connected to the article that we're dealing with. So we can sort of put them aside. So we know he's a historian. We know he teaches at UCLA. We know he's written a few books. Um, so I would say, okay, let, let's trust his take on the role of humanities in higher education. Accuracy, which is just if the facts presented in an article seem to be accurate. And this can be challenging to figure out too. If we go back to this article, we'll see that there are lots of citations. Sometimes they're at the end of the article. Sometimes they're within the text of the article. But this is sort of where the author is pulling their, their research from. So just like you have to include your citations so your professor can see where your research came from, this, al this allows you to do the same thing to somebody else. And it's not that you need to check every fact cited in an article, but more just if something seems weird to go back and see where they pulled their research from, maybe applying the crab test to their own research. And usually, especially as you, you become more of an expert in an issue during the course of your research, you'll sort of have a sense of like, oh, okay, that sounds right, or oh, that sounds weird, that sounds odd. Purpose. That's the idea of if an author is trying to convince you of something, and often they are trying to convince you of something if it's, an, if it's a persuasive essay, that's kind of the point of them. But the idea is if a person has a hidden agenda. So remember before we saw that there's some, there's some discussion around Michael Moranz's views on Zionism. Um, and in the case of an article about humanities and higher education, it doesn't really seem to be an issue. But if we were reading something that Michael Lorenz wrote about Israel or something that he wrote about Zionism, then you might want to sort of look at, at more of like this canary mission, more of what his views are, and just to sort of figure out if, if everything that he's writing is being transparent. It's not that having an opinion on a topic, on an idea, makes everything you write controversial. It's really just like understanding if there's like an agenda that's not being put forward, like a hidden agenda. And again, that can be hard to suss out. Um, but in this case, you just, you know, you can sort of say there might be, Michael Moran's might have some opinions about Israel. And if we were, if we were reading something he wrote about it, that would be something to factor in. But in the case of the article we're dealing with, it's not something we need to deal with. And I know these things are complicated, um, and that's what makes research so interesting because you sort of, you know, you see how we're like kind of pulling a thread, and then you, you get all of these other things. And some of it is going to be related to your research, and some of it isn't. And as you do this more and more, you'll get better at like saying, okay, this, this is important to, to assessing this article, or, you know, this has nothing to do with the article. So just to recap, Currency, is the article too old? And really, that is the article too old for my research. Relevance, does the article help my research? Authority, does the author know about the topic? Accuracy, are the facts correct? And purpose, why was this written? And then just some quick evaluation tips too. Um, read slowly and carefully. That makes things much easier because the more you understand what you're reading and how the pieces fit together, the easier it is to determine you know, if an article is relevant, if the author seems to know what they're talking about. So you know, build that into your timeline. Start with evaluation. Start your evaluation with relevance because everything flows out of that and then move on from relevance. And pretend someone is grilling you. This is something I do. I pretend somebody, usually my dad is like asking me pointed questions about the research. You know, well, how do you know this person knows this? Or, you know, where did they get their research from? Or when was this published? That sort of thing. So, you know, just to have like an imaginary character or perhaps a real character in your head 
um, that's making you sort of justify why you chose to use this in your research. And don't forget, ask for help. The library is fully remote right now. You can ask us questions and you can always email me and I'm happy to walk you through, you know, if, if something seems fishy or, you know, if you have a question about determining authority, that sort of thing. And that's how you evaluate 